Hello and welcome to my new SQL Server Wiki. Today I want to talk about index maintenance operations. We cover index rebuild and index reorganize operations in detail, how to differentiate internally and when you should use which operation. Index rebuild and index reorganize operations are both used to eliminate index fragmentation in clustered and non-clustered indexes. Index fragmentation means that the logical and physical sorting order of the pages in the leaf level of the index is not the same anymore. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I will describe both operations to you and when you should use which one. I want to demonstrate you now in the first step how index rebuild operations are working in SQL Server. I have demonstrated here a very simple index, this can be a clustered index, non-clustered index, and as I've already said in the beginning, index fragmentation means that the logical and physical sorting order of our pages in the leaf level is not the same anymore. As you can see here, we have Page IDs like 80, 100, 90, 120, 110 means those page IDs are not in ascending order anymore, means we have here some index fragmentation. When you run an index rebuild operation, it just means that SQL Server generates you a complete fresh new index in your data file and just deallocates the old one means when your original index is let's say 100 gigabytes large your new index is also 100 gigabytes large means your data file needs at least 100 additional gigabytes of free space so that the new index can be written in addition you also generate in that specific scenario 100 gigabyte of transaction log records because an index rebuild operation is just one large transaction therefore you should always size your transaction log accordingly and a good initial size of a transaction log can be the largest index that you are rebuilding so when you know you have a clustered index and that clustered index is 100 gigabytes large, then you should also set your transaction log accordingly because you will need that space in your transaction log. That's also very, very important. And a rebuild is just one large transaction, means when you have that transaction completed at 99%, maybe Friday afternoon, you want to go home and you cancel that index rebuild operation, SQL Server has to perform a large rollback, means you are doing the same thing again and just undoing the whole index rebuild operation, which also generates you additional overhead in your transaction log. So you also have to be aware of that when you, when you want to cancel a rebuild. You're just doing the work that you have already done, just in the opposite direction. In addition to index rebuild operations, SQL Server also supports so-called reorganize operations that you can apply on clustered and non-clustered indexes. Imagine we have our same index again and we have some index fragmentation of the leaf level of that index. An index reorganizer operation just works internally with multiple system transactions. And what SQL Server is doing here is the following. SQL Server just goes through the leaf level of that index with a system transaction and just swaps two pages if those page if those pages are not in ascending order. So you can see here, with a page ID of 100, page ID of 80, not ascending. So we just swap both pages. That's one system transaction. System transaction. The overhead of that swap operation is one page of eight kilobytes. Then we have our next system transaction we have here, Page ID 80, 100, 110, 90. 110 and 90 is out of order. So again, we swap both 
features. Then we have our third system transaction. You have 80, 190. 190 again has to be swapped. So we swap here 90 and 100. And now when you look on those page IDs, you have here first page 80, second page 90, 100, 110 and 120 means with three internal system transactions we were able to get rid of that index fragmentation with a reorganized operation. So the question is now when should you run a rebuild operation and when you should run a reorganized operation. Microsoft pre commands that we run an index reorganized operation when we have an index fragmentation between between 10 and 30 percent in the leaf level when we have an index fragmentation which is larger than 30 percent then microsoft recommends an index rebuild operation and both things should be only applied when we have at least 10,000 pages in the leaf level. Otherwise, index fragmentation doesn't matter. Question is why we should make reorganized operations between 10 and 30% and with a larger index fragmentation in rebuild operation. The idea behind these numbers is very simple. When you are dealing with a small index fragmentation, the individual system transactions will be faster than one huge rebuild operation. And when you are dealing with a larger index fragmentation, then the rebuild will be faster as your individual system transactions. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio, where we will see how we can perform rebuild and reorganize operations on our indexes. In this demonstration, I want to show you how you can identify index fragmentation with a dynamic management function in SQL Server and how you can afterwards run index rebuild or index reorganize operations. To identify index fragmentation, SQL Server offers you the dynamic management function sysdmdb index physical stats. This dynamic management function accepts five input parameters, the database ID, the object ID, the index ID, the partition ID, and finally a mode parameter, which can be limited, sampled, or detailed. In our example, I want to analyze all indexes on the table person.person .person of the AdventureWorks 2012 database. I also provide here the limited mode parameter which just scans the first non-leaf level of the index to give you some information about the index itself and the actual index fragmentation. When we run that query you can see the output returned from this dynamic management function. As you can see, we have one clustered index, two non-clustered indexes, and multiple XML indexes defined on the table person.person. .person. The most important column regarding index fragmentation is the average fragmentation in percent column, which tells you the actual fragmentation of the index. As I have mentioned at the beginning of this SQL Server Quickie, index fragmentation means that the logical and the physical sorting order of the pages in the leaf level is not the same anymore. As you can see from the output, the clustered index of the table person.person .person shows some index fragmentation and one of the non-clustered indexes also has some heavy index fragmentation. But before you decide to rebuild or reorganize the index, it is also very important to check how large that index is. As I have mentioned on the flip chart, you should only care about index fragmentation if the page count of the index is more than 10,000 pages. And the column page count from this TMF tells you how many pages you have. 
As you can see in this case, we are dealing with just small indexes because every index has less than 10,000 pages. Therefore, you shouldn't care about index fragmentation in this case. With the help of this dynamic management function, it is very easy to set up a scheduled job which just checks the index fragmentation and the page count in the first step. And based on that check, you can then decide if you want to run an index rebuild or index reorganize operation. For tonality, you don't have to code such logic on your own because Ola Hellengren, a guy from Sweden, provides us the so-called index maintenance solution. A set of stored procedures with which you can run backups, database integrity jobs, index and statistics maintenance operations in a very easy way. You can download that set of stored procedures for free from his website. After you have installed these scripts, you can use the stored procedure index optimize to run your index maintenance operation. As you can see from this example, you just have to specify the index fragmentation levels, the page count and what index maintenance operation you want to run based on the actual fragmentation. It is a simple call to a stored procedure and you don't have to bother with the internals of index fragmentation too much anymore. Easy, isn't it? In this SQL Server Quickie, I have covered index rebuild and index reorganize operations. Both maintenance operations are used to deal with index fragmentation in clustered and non-clustered indexes. The most important thing here is that an index rebuild operation is one large transaction. Therefore, you will need a lot of space in your data file and also in your transaction log file. Your transaction log file should be at least as large as the largest index that you want to rebuild. On the other hand, an index reorganize operation consists of small individual system transactions which only rearrange pages in the leaf level of an index to get rid of the index fragmentation. Therefore, index reorganize operations are only recommended when your index fragmentation is quite low, between 10 and 30%. If you want to make your life as a DBA very easy, you should also check out Ola Hellengren's SQL Server maintenance solution, a set of free stored procedures which also covers functionality for index maintenance operations. I hope that you have enjoyed this SQL Server Quickie and I'm already looking forward to welcoming you again next month. Thanks for watching.